Hello, this is Ibrahim Nassar with Ozen Engineering. And this demo will show you how to create a dynamic link between HFSS design and the circuit design, and how to use the circuit design with the Smith tool that is integrated to design a matching circuit, and then be able to push back the excitation into HFSS and see the impact of matching on the far field data. We will start this demo by having this antenna geometry, which is a log periodic antenna that is designed to operate at 10 gigahertz and simulate it from 8 to 11 gigahertz. Let's plot the S parameters to see the data before the match. So let's create a rectangular plot of the S11. And as you see, the antenna is not matched. And we can also look at it in a Smith uh, chart, uh, in the Smith chart plot. And as you see, here's where, where the S parameter is located in the Smith chart. Let's also plot the far field data to see how after the match, this the far field data will be updated. So let's create an antenna parameter report and select the data table. And let's plot the peak directivity and the peak gain, the peak realized gain and the peak system gain. The reason I plotted all these quantity because the peak gain is uh, be calculated based on the accepted power, so the mismatch loss does not impact the gain value. The peak realized gain does include the mismatch loss, and the peak system gain gives you the gain of the total system when you have a, a, a dynamic link with circuit. And this is basically the, the quantity that will be updated when we push back the excitation into HFSS. So let's create the report. So we see that the peak gain is 5.37 dB. And because of the mismatch, the gain is lower by 2 dB. And we see also that the peak realized gain and peak system gain here, since it's the same power, input power, is are identical. OK? So to create a circuit design, we can go to Project, Insert Circuit Design. Here we can select. Uh, material definition if we want to, to have that but in this case we just design ideal matching circuit elements so we let's keep it to none and hit okay so now when a circuit design is inserted let's rename it to call it antenna matching now to link that of this design into circuit we basically just drag it and drop it into circuit and now as you see it will show up as a circuit component and under the circuit design. To simulate it, we can add the port, interface port. So let's click here, let's click here. And now we have a port. We can in circuit run linear network analysis. To do that, you can add the Nixon solution setup and linear network analysis. And here we can define a frequency sweep. So let's hit OK. So it's already defined here from 8 to 11 gigahertz with a step of 0.01. Let's simulate it by right click on the linear frequency and click on analyze. So as you see, it's a quick simulation. Now we can look at the parameters here. So by right click on results and selecting create standard report, rectangular plot, S11 in DB. So we see these results are identical to what we have seen in HFSS design. Since both, they use the same source of 50 ohm. Okay, so now how do we match this antenna? Um, in the circuit, there is a, a Smith tool that we can use it here, or we can add just ideal circuit elements and run optimization and tuning manually. To use the Smith tool, we can go to circuit, Smith tool, and let's change first the frequency to 10 gigahertz, where we wanna design the matching network. Let's make this a little bit larger. OK, the first step to design it is to add a data marker at 10 gigahertz. So let's see where's the 10 gigahertz. OK. OK, it's very close. Then we right click and say exit the marker mode. 
So now we determine this is the point that we were trying to match to 50 ohm. So to match it, we need to create a conjugate match. So we need to determine the conjugate point in the Smith tool before we add the, um, the, the matching elements. To do that, we click on conjugate and we select that data marker point. Okay, so this is the matching, the conjugate match point in the Smith tool. Now to design the, the matching element, we click on the matching tab and we click on, we select uh, this point, then we click on new match and we wanna match it to the center of the Smith chart. So we click here. Now we start to add the elements. We wanna match this point to this point. So we add first, let's add a circuit, uh, a series capacitor and we can then drag it and drop it drag it all the way to the point where that we need. So let's add it up to here. And then we wanna add a match, a shunt inductor. And similarly, we can drag it. And now you see, we are very close to that point. Maybe we need to turn this a little bit. Okay. So this is going to be very close uh, to, um, to have a, a good match. So once we're done, we click export and a sub-circuit has been inserted into the project tree. So we hit okay and we close this. So now we go back to the circuit design. So as you see, this is um, the sub-circuit that we're added. So let's connect it here. Delete this line. So now it's connected in series with between the circuit component and the port. If we double click on it, we can uh, see what it is and see we get all the details about it. Or we can click here to see the elements inside that sub circuit. So it uses about 180 femtofarad and uh, shunt 3.1 nano Henry. Now, um, we can right click again and analyze the results. And look at the things too. So now we see the antenna is nearly matched. So we can add a marker point and see where's the 10 gigahertz point now. So the 10 gigahertz is almost in, at the center of the Smith chart. And we can also look at the rectangular plot. So we see now there's a good match at these points. Okay, <clears throat> now to be able to push the excitations, we need to um, uh, modify the port. So we, by double click on the port here, we need to use a microwave port and we need to edit this source by adding power sinusoidal signal to, the, to this source. So we click here and let's add one volt and we keep all the setting, other settings to be the same. Hit OK, and we hit OK, and we hit OK here. Now we can re-simulate. Okay. So let's go back a little bit to HFSS and um, uh, to look at the edit sources. So this is how the uh, source magnitude and phase were defined in HFSS. And when we plotted the far field data. So now we're going to push the excitation. What this step will do, it will basically update the magnitudes and phases at the source. Uh, so we can see the impact on the far field. So now it's one volt and zero degree. So let's hit OK here. And again, the, the system gain is a 3.1 dB. Now to push the excitation, we simply select the circuit component, right click and say, push excitations. And we will push the linear frequency data, meet OK. So now these results were pushed. So we go now into HFSS, we see if the sources got updated. So right click on field overlay, select edit sources. And now you see that the magnitude and phase are brought into HFSS design as a, a data set to have different magnitudes and phases over frequency. And you see now that uh, HFSS automatically selected to use the system power, which is here in this case 0.0025 calculated from the circuit. 
and this box is checked to include the post-processing effect. So we hit OK. Now we should see that the far field data got updated. So now you see that the system gain is now 5.357, which is very close to the peak gain. So that indicates that the far field data got updated and the match got improved. We can also notice here that the S parameters did not change because again, it's still calculated based on the analysis run in HFSS. So what only gets updated here in this dynamic link is the field quantities and the far fields. That's all for this demo and thank you for watching.